Hearty welcome to the 44th session in our Learn from the Legends International webinar series in Neonatology, organized by National Neonatology Forum Kerala and IAP Neonatology Chapter. It's indeed an honor to have Professor Daniel Pepistanato from the University Hospital of Padua and Director of Neonatal Transport Service, uh, Vento region, Italy, who will speak to us on newer applications of laryngeal mask airway in neonates. This session will be more moderated by uh, Sir Vice Admiral Sheila Mathai, consultant neonatologist, RR Hospital, Director General, Armed Forces, Medical Services, and Dr. C. Vinod, Rio Maternity and Children's Hospital, Madurai, Tamil Nadu, India. Once again, a warm welcome to the eminent faculty, the moderators, and the participants. Thank you very much, J. NNF. Over to Dr. B.C. Manoj. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on whichever area of the globe you are in. I have great pleasure to introduce the legend of today, Professor Daniel Travisinotto, an original researcher in neonatology. Daniel is an associate professor at the University of Padova, Italy, president of the Venetia Region Italian Society of Neonatology and director of the East Venetia Region Neonatal Transport Service. He is also the vice director of the Master on Neonatology and Intensive Neonatal Care at University of Padua. Professor Tevsonato is a member of the ILCOR International Liaison Committee on Restoration, Neonatal Restoration Task Force and a member of the European Restoration Council Task Force Neonatal Restoration. His research focuses on various subjects. He has done enough uh, research and more on various subjects, neonatal restoration, education, maternal and neonatal care in low resource countries, neonatal airway management and neonatal transport. He is involved in many international collaborative projects and has been invited as a speaker in about 250 national and international congresses, meetings and workshops. Since a life, life, a long time, he is conducting educational and research activities in many middle and low income countries including Mongolia, Vietnam, Myanmar, Sudan, Mozambique, Uganda, Ethiopia, etc. And he is the co-author uh, of uh, about 300 peer-reviewed articles and has published chapters in uh, neontology books. He has co-authored also many peer-reviewed articles. He is also the co-inventor of a supraglottic airway device for drug delivery. Friends, the introduction runs to pages. I am cutting short the introduction now. Let us hear from the legend Professor Trevisanato on the use of laryngeal mask airway, something we have not been uh, utilizing it to its fullest potential. Over to Professor Daniel. Uh, first of like, I would like to thank Dr. Manoy and, uh, and the faculty for inviting me. It is important, uh, um, I would say, webinar series. And so thank you for, for invitation. Uh, I can think to start with my presentation. I share my 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 screen. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. And so again, thank you for inviting me. And the title that Dr. Manoy gave me was uh, "Laryngeal Mask Potential Uses or Potential Application in Neonates." Uh, I have not specific 
un conflict of interest. My, I am a co-inventor of the laryngeal mask hardware device with drug delivery means. And, uh, and it is really my, my only uh, conflict of interest. I start my presentation with this slide. Here you can see Dr. Archie Brain. Dr. Archie Brain is an English uh, anesthesiologist and is, is uh, the inventor of the laryngeal mask. In this slide, you can see Dr. Uh, Archie Brain during experiment that was uh, took at the London uh, Hospital in 1983. The, Experiment consisted in a positioning of the laryngeal mask in itself. He did his intervention three times in himself to convince the London Hospital Ethics Committee that it was an effective device for uh, ventilating the, the odors. And here you can see the um, stupor, I would say, the reaction of the Ethics Committee in the, at the London Hospital Ethics. Apart from uh, some uh, anecdotal aspect of the laryngeal mask is uh, this history of laryngeal mask is full of very nice anecdotal uh, situation. This is the first article that has been published on the laryngeal mask. It has been published on, uh, in a British Journal of Anesthesia in 1983. And I would like with you to read the, the, uh, the title. The title is The Laryngeal Mask, a new concept in hardware management. It was not uh, defined as a, a new device, as we say. And so the concept, concept is a different uh, thing than the device. It's a more, more important, more uh, in-depth concept. Since this time, there was a, since that time, there was an evolution of the LMA concept. And as you can see here, there are some models that were produced over time and all of them were progressively improved based on the requirements of the users, in particular from anesthesiology that gave to Archie Brain, uh, to the producer, some ideas to improve the uh, laryngeal mask. Why we can consider the laryngeal mask? If the, the laryngeal mask, and we want to compare the laryngeal mask with the first competitor, uh, uh, that is the, Face mask, we have really two important advantages when we use the laryngeal mask. The first advantage is that uh, laryngeal mask compared to face mask um, reduce, at least reduce or may avoid the, le the leak around the mask. We know that when we use the face mask, uh, there are some uh, papers that show that we can have 76, 70, 60, 70% of leak around the mask. And so the laryngeal mask can avoid this aspect. And uh, another, another, um, another, sorry, another, sorry, another important advantage is that uh, when you use the laryngeal mask, you bypass the airway block because you are directly in front of the glottis. And while this problem could be found with uh, when you use this mask. What are the disadvantages of the laryngeal mask compared to the face mask? But in general, we say that you have a leak pressure at 22, 25 centimeters of water that could be a low pressure for, for stiff lung at the beginning, uh, when at the beginning of the first breath in the delivery room. But there are some studies that show that we, you can achieve 37 centimeters of water. And so this, this could be overcome with the laryngeal mask. And another aspect that could be and, and disadvantage of the laryngeal mask compared to the face mask is higher invasivity. Really, it has not been demonstrated, and so we will look at uh, some article later that uh, um, confirmed that the laryngeal mask was not more invasive than the face mask. If you compare the laryngeal mask with the second competitor, that is the endotracheal tube, the advantages are very important. When you use the laryngeal mask, you have a reduced invasiveness with the laryngeal mask comparing the tracheal tube. It has been very well demonstrated this advantage in uh, animal as well as in, uh, in adult patient. And so this is an advantage for adult patient. You can imagine that is also more important for, new, for newborns. Another important aspect, of the laryngeal mask. Another important advantage of the laryngeal mask compared to the endotracheal tube is easier positioning. If you take 100 person in your room, 
and you have to position in the laryngeal mask in the mannequin 99 of them, and so 99% of, of your young doctors or midwife or nurses will position in the laryngeal mask uh, at the first attempt. The disadvantage of the laryngeal mask compared to tracheal tube Again, is the leak pressure at 22, 25 centimeters of water, but I told you this could be overcome. And another problem that anesthesia for the anesthesiologist is very important during the operation, during surgery, you have not a complete seal as we have as you have with endotracheal tube. However, the risk of having ingesting in neonates, in particular, in neonates, for example, in, uh, in delivery room, is not uh, a problem for us. Okay, coming back to the title of my presentation, I identify five potential uses of the laryngeal mask in neonates. We don't uh, cover all of them in this presentation, but we look uh, only at uh, some of them. The first that we look at is the congenital hardware malformation. There is a long list of care uh, report that uh, of uh, patient with congenital upper airway malformation, where the um, healthcare provider tried to ventilate the patient with a face mask and failed, tried to intubate the patient and failed. Luckily, he had the laryngeal mask on the, on the um, uh, emergency, emergency um, trolley, and this patient, were, this, this patient were saved with the laryngeal mask. And so, in many situations, there are many, many um, case reports that show that the laryngeal mask was life-saving. Just this is a good um, reason to have the laryngeal mask as a rescue device. It is one patient that uh, uh, was uh, carried for our group. I was on call. This patient was born in, uh, in a peripheral hospital at 60 kilometers from Padua, from my hospital. I was on call for a transport team and uh, the anesthesiologist at the center tried to intubate, tried to ventilate, but they failed and uh, opportunity they put the laryngeal mask. When I arrived in this, um, this at, the, at the peripheral hospital, oh wow, I was, I, I was in trouble for the transplant. So I tried to ventilate with the face mask, but it was not possible because you had an important leak around the, the mask because of, due to severe micronyaf. I tried to intubate this patient, but really this patient had a higher profound glottis. And so with every kind of uh, blade of the laryngoscope, with every kind of endotracheal tube, also in a blind way, I was not able to intubate this patient. And finally, another important problem was that uh, there was a severe hypoplastone. And so the blade of the laryngoscope was not uh, positioned in the correct way. And so I decided to transfer this patient with the laryngeal mask. When we arrived, uh, our emergency department in Padua, the endoscopist uh, needed uh, 45 minutes to intubate uh, with fiber opiscope uh, the this patient. Uh, another idea to, um, to manage the difficult hardware is to use the laryngeal mask as a simple method to intubate the patient. You have position at the laryngeal mask, you can use the same the laryngeal mask, the, um, um, a, a, a via to intubate this patient as reported by this article. When I saw this article, I was very, very interested, very enthusiastic to do it, but I tried to do it, but I failed in, in a few patients and I found other articles, other colleagues that failed. If you use the laryngeal mask as, if you decide to use the laryngeal mask, as a, a via to intuit, we have to use a fiber optic bronchoscope. And so you can put your tube here. And after you enter through the laryngeal mask, and you can intubate the patient under vision. What happened? OK. This is one patient that we treated, for example, in, uh, in such a way. This was a patient with upper hour malformation. And we use. Uh, we intubate with the endoscopic uh, guided through the IJ. It was a patient with uh, 1.47 grams, 40,000 grams. 
in 36 weeks with upper hour malformation. But the intubation, for example, in this case, through the laryngeal mask was very easy and very effective. The, another use for the laryngeal mask in neonate is uh, regard the neonatal station. Surely this is the um, most important of application of the laryngeal mask. We know that uh, if you, in the, from an epidemiological point of view, if you have uh, 100 patients in the general population, five to 10 of them require some degree of uh, active resuscitation, for example, stimulation at birth of uh, to breathe. And we know that three to 5% need positive pressure ventilation. And we know that from the test of natural station that effective positive positive press ventilation is the most important intervention during natural station. Now, the question is, when we ventilate a patient, we have three possible interfaces. We have the face mask, we have an tracheal tube, and we have the laryngeal mask. Okay, we start with the face mask. This is a study that conducted in a delivery room in Mozambique, in Beira, the city of Beira. And we were very interested in knowing in knowing the impact of uh, a one-day neonatal station program course. And so we collected in the delivery room 50 resuscitation after we organized the course, one-day course, and after we collected after the course 50 videos, 50 other, further other um, 50 resuscitation. This is the sign. Here you can see the cameras that we put um, on the, on the infrawarmer. And these are the results. Uh, we used the predefined score, of course. Uh, and what we found was that we regard the face mask ventilation, the performance from 20 uh, increased to 40% of the score. This was a significant from a statistical point of view, but of course, we were not satisfied with this because we want to achieve around 80, 90% of the score. And so we decide to change our strategy and we tweet a low dose high frequency training. We sent the champion, the best uh, um, midwife in the delivery room one time per week with the mannequin and she taught neonatal station to the nurses, to the midwife uh, who were there. After months, we look at the impact on the real resuscitation of of this approach, of this training, of this low dose, high frequency training. And what we found after this month was that back mass ventilation, the score did not decrease, but also did not increase. And so the impact was again limited. This is, a, just to show you, this is a video after the six months training. You can see here, that the midwife tried to do um, the Mr. Sopa correction, for example. No, she, she tried to understand, but uh, to apply what uh, she learned in the mannequin. But uh, as you can see here, the quality of ventilation is, is inefficient, but, uh, despite we organize a long training in this, in this midwife. Uh, this is a Cochrane review published in 2018 by Quereshi. And what we she, uh, this review included several randomized control trial that, uh, that uh, included only late preterm full term birth. If you have 100 patients in need of uh, PP and you start with face mask, 84% of them are effectively ventilated with uh, a face mask. However, you have a proportion, more or less one every five patients, that need further intervention. Message number one on mass ventilation. Teaching effective face mass ventilation in clinical practice is difficult, and about 85% of infants needing PPV respond to mass. But we have a portion of patients who need a different solution. The different solution could be the endotracheal tube. More or less, literature says that 1% of the entire population require endotracheal intubation. Is a play to teach or to learn intubation? Is a children play? 
I like this to study because uh, uh, in this study we can try to understand what she, which is the learning curve for intubation. And so how many attempts do we have to give to our young doctors or our, our young colleagues to learn intubation? These are two studies conducted uh, in, a, in a anesthesiology literature where it is, uh, um, they try to, to access the appropriate level of proficiency. They defined appropriate the, the, a proficiency uh, where there was an acceptable failure rate at the first attempt of 10%. And so you have to put nine out of 10 tube in the trachea uh, at the first attempt. And what uh, this study was conducted in an ideal situation in operating room with the patient who were sedated, anesthetized, and so an adult patient, and so completely different from the new. These two studies show that to achieve an appropriate level of proficiency, you need more or less 50 attempts. This is what the literature say in adults. What is the number of attempts that we have to offer to our young doctor? to achieve an appropriate level of proficiency in the neonatal restriction or neonatal intubation. Really, we don't know this now. We don't know which is the learning curve for intubation in newborns. However, if here we have 50 attempts, it could be a problem for us. This is a whole study from Tina Leone, where she um, reported that in 1994, Getty residents at uh, uh, San Diego Hospital, San Diego University, um, had uh, the availability of uh, 38, they spoke to eight, 38 intubation attempts. Of them, only 24 were successful intubation. Only a few years later, you can see here, it was exactly 20 years ago, a pediatric attending in uh, a pediatric resident at San Diego University had the exposure to only 12 intubation with a successful rate of four. This is a recent study from the group of Foy Elizabeth from um, Philadelphia. And you can see here that success of the first intubation was only 46%. And of course, dependent on the, on the health giver position, pediatric residents, neonatology fellow, attending neonatologist. It was an increase, of course, rate success rate um, based on the role that you have. The message number two is that teaching effective endotracheal intubation in clinical practice is very difficult. Experienced caregivers strongly influence the success of endotracheal intubation. And finally, is that uh, exposure to the procedure is becoming rare for PDT resident. So we can consider, can consider another approach. We can consider the third interface that uh, we have available. Uh, the next question, when we can use the laryngeal mask? We are in, we face a new body of PPB and we can decide to use the laryngeal mask as the first choice. As we can also decide to use the laryngeal mask after second choice, after the face mask ventilation failed, or if you are desperate, we can use to use the laryngeal mask after that both face mask as well as intubation failure. The laryng here you can see the history. In this slide, I try to put the history of guidelines for notification. And the laryngeal mask compared in the guidelines, really it's better to say in the text of the guidelines for the first time 20 years, 22, five years ago. What the guidelines in 2000 stated was the laryngeal mask may be an effective alternative in case of failure of face mask, ventilation, and or tracheal intubation. If you want to come back to the previous slide, the laryngeal 2000 guidelines, here we can put uh, suggested to use the laryngeal mask uh, in case of failure of face mask, in case of face intubation. So here we have two head mile, but uh, at that time, the laryngeal mask was not considered as the choice. What happened from 2000 to 2005 or, the, or later? In 2015, the laryngeal mask increased 
uh, its reputation because from the text she was put and in the in the algorithm directly in the algorithm okay so this is these are the american guidelines what happened 2015 2020 this uh, uh, review uh, cochrane review i show you already it but now we look in this uh, reviewing seven randomized control trial almost 800 infants were enrolled in this review the quality of evidence was uh, rated from very low to low quality and uh, what this what this review and meta analysis say is that if you have a patient in need of EPV and you start with LMA compared to bag and mass ventilation, re you reduce the need for intubation. And so laryngeal mass reduce compared to face mask the need of intubation. If you start with the laryngeal mask, you can reduce the ventilation time significantly. And so if you have you need 100 patients in need of PPD, and you start with face mask, you save or you effectively ventilate 84%. But if you start with the laryngeal mask, you effectively ventilate 97%. And so only 3% of your patient in need of PPD will need uh, intubation. Um, the study, the six study enrolled in the, in the Cochrane, look at the, the a short term outcome or important outcome is better to say, including, for example, need for intubation, ventilation, and so on. This is the largest study published so far on the laryngeal mask airway during a test patient. This study was a, a collaboration among University of Bergen, Norway, Makerere University in Kampala, Uganda, our university, Ekanoliska Institute in, in, uh, in Sweden. We included in this study, uh, neonate, we estimated gestational age of the, at least 34 weeks, of the peer to weight of uh, two kilograms. The study was conducted at Mulago Hospital in Kampala between uh, May 8, 2018 and 2019. All resuscitation were video record. Um, the study design included a by day class randomization. At uh, 8 a.m. in the morning, we opened the, um, the envelope. And uh, if there was a laryngeal mask, all the patients in need of PPV for that day were ventilated with the laryngeal mask. Or if there was written face mask, they were ventilated for the entire day for the next 24 hours with the face mask. Uh, in this study, we used a um, critical outcome, not the important outcome such as intubation, because uh, it, uh, in this hospital, intubation was not allowed. And so we used early neonatal death within seven days or admission to the NICU with moderate to severe hypoxia ischemia at one and five days of, uh, during hospitalization. Um, this is the flow chart. Uh, 563 patients were treated, uh, were uh, randomized uh, to the laryngeal mask, and uh, 591 patients were included in the analysis that uh, patients who were treated with the face mask. Uh, 3.5 patients who were um, uh, randomized to be treated in the arm of the laryngeal mask were crossover to the face group. And so failed the laryngeal mask, they were ventilated with face mask. Uh, 19, the 10.9% of patients were randomized to be treated with face mask, failed and were treated with, LA, with the LMA. This difference was significant. And so more patients in the group uh, of face mask failed compared to the group with laryngeal mask. However, if you look at the primary outcome, the composite outcome, early neonatal mortality plus severe or moderate um, hypoxia ischemic encephalopathy, we don't find, we did not find any difference, 27% and 24%. If you look at the secondary outcome, also in this case, we didn't found, uh, find um, differences between the two arms. In addition, we didn't find a difference in, with regard to adverse events or severe adverse events between the two groups. The conclusion of this study were that in your nature with asphyxia, 
the laryngeal mass was safe in hands of midwife, but was not superior to face mass venting with respect to early neonatal death and moderate to severe hypoxia, ischemic encephalopathy. The laryngeal mask in 2021, and so a few months ago, appeared for the first time in the algorithm also of uh, European guidelines. And uh, the laryngeal mask appeared two times in, uh, in our algorithm. Uh, the last uh, use, potential use of the laryngeal mask in neonate is uh, for administration. That is another practice that uh, we do very frequently as neonatologists. When we had this idea I, at the beginning, our idea was to use a catheter and to go with the catheter behind the LMA tip and to arrive to the vocal cords and to cross also the vocal cords. And with this idea, we treated the first um, uh, four patients. And what we found, unfortunately, was that the oxygenation, instead to increase, decreased. And so we were very depressed from, from this first uh, result, these findings. And so we decided to change our, our approach because what we thought was that probably if you do this procedure uh, in a blind way, you don't know where the tip or your catheter goes. You can go to the esophagus, it could go here. So we don't know where. And so we changed our approach, we decide to put the tip of, uh, of the catheter behind the LMA tip. And so it's uh, you know, more or less at this level. And so to spread, to push the surfactant by using um, positive pressure ventilation to the lab. With this new approach, these are the first eight patients that we published. Patient had uh, a virtual or this patient were in, in uh, the NICU. All, the, all they had a RDS, and uh, this is the range of uh, the built weight, 800 grams to 0.5 kilogram. They were in the CPAP at five centimeter water, and they had 50% or the range was 50, 40, 80% oxygen. What we found with this new approach was that oxygenation significantly improve in all the treatment, and this is the, the mean. While this was the previous, when we the, used the catheter beyond the tip. And so this was the first result. If you want to look at the um, result in terms of uh, oxygen, the pre-treatment was, or the baseline uh, um, oxygen this was uh, 55%. And uh, after the treatment uh, went to 30%, three hours after. And if you want to look at the steel ray, this was the chest array of a patient with 33 weeks before and after two hours. So as you can see here, the, the volume and the transparency significant increase after the subtractant treatment with the laryngeal mass. Here we are young and we were, and we were using the laryngeal mass. This is a particular laryngeal mass with uh, some specific characteristic with my colleagues. What we know, based on the literature on the fact of laryngeal mask and surfactant. There are five observational studies. Uh, three of them are from our group. And what we found was that feasibility as, as uh, the efficacy was high for the most part of them. And we had not complication. It is a uh, um, meta-analysis, review and meta-analysis study. We tried to summarize the randomized control trial who consider the use of uh, laryngeal mass for sulfate intubation. And we found two studies who com that compare the LMA versus nasal CPAP, and three studies that compare LMA versus SUSU. In these five studies, three mm, models of laryngeal mass were used, laryngeal mass procedure, classic, and digel. What, uh, what we found from what this meta-analysis mm, suggests or, or found, we know that uh, if you use the laryngeal mask and we give surfactant through the laryngeal mask compared to the CPAP without surfactant, we decrease the need for mechanic ventilation or intubation. If you use the, you compare the laryngeal mask versus insure surfactant administered with the laryngeal mask or versus insure, we found that 
there was a similar decrease in uh, the need of intubation or mechanical or in, in, intubation or mechanical ventilation. So sulfate so administration by a laryngeal mask ensures seem to give the same result. If you give sulfate by a laryngeal mask compared to another CPAP only, we decrease the need of FIO2 at one, six hour. And if you use the laryngeal mask, sulfate given via, via laryngeal mask or sulfate given via insured approach, we have the same um, FIO2 at uh, 161. What uh, our meta-analysis showed is that sulfate administration via su um, subargotti airway device reduced the need for intubated mechanical ventilation and increased the amount of required sulfate. It was a, a small amount of need of sulfate. Short-term oxygen requirement decreased decrease with a uh, supergotti airway device compared to another CPAP alone, but are similar to insure approach. Available literature include a few small quality studies that prevents to draw strong conclusion. Our conclusion of this meta-analysis was that uh, sulfate administration via supergotti airway device should be limited to clinical trials. And so what we know in this moment regarding the laryngeal mask and sulfate administration. Based on my experience or my idea is that uh, if you use the laryngeal mask and you use a, a catheter in a blind approach and the tip that is, uh, we try to put the tip of our catheter behind the um, tip of the laryngeal mask could be a dangerous uh, approach. If you use the catheter that is positioned behind the LMA tip, I think that's possible. We can achieve a better uh, oxygenation of the patient, we can avoid intubation. But in my opinion, the ideal approach is to use this approach, but are under vision. We want to use an endoscope to have the opportunity to pass the vocal under vision, and this could be a the future project for laryngeal mask. Uh, we try to develop this, uh, this idea. It is the laryngeal mask where you can see the catheter here that go to the vocal cord, through the vocal cord. Here you can see the camera that can help you to, to see where, where you are going. So, so part administration by a laryngeal mask, but under vision that is different. We perform any more study. We enrolled uh, the pigs two kilograms, uh, we um, uh, use the um, puractant alpha so we take nephew, and so we were able to label the surfactant and uh, we measure the distribution of surfactant by using gas scintigraphy. Here you can see our result that has been published uh, two months ago. Uh, when you use this kind of approach and so the laryngeal mask behind the, um, with the tip here before, before the exit uh, of the laryngeal mask, you can see that surfactant go to the lung, but a part of surfactant goes also to the stomach. Okay, this is the anterior, posterior part. These are the, the lung, these are the stomach. If you use our approach, laryngeal mask camera anterior and posterior region, so under vision, what we found was that uh, the most part of the surfactant went to the lung, and just only a little part of the, of the surfactant remain, or is better, there was a reflux, reflux from the, from the um, as we do with this approach, as part of surfactant remained in the, in the, in the, in, in this part. And uh, why, as you can see, no surfactant arrived to the stomach. This is the control group. The study, this uh, animal were treated, six patients, six uh, uh, pig were with the insure approach. And of course, all the surfactant went to the, to, the, to the lung. And so this study showed that we have a, a good opportunity. This, this, uh, the surfactant administration is very similar to the um, gold standard that we have now. What are the future direction of the Sopragotti device? We have at the moment seven brands of neonatal laryngeal mask that we have in, uh, summarized in this review. 
uh, only one of them is uh, don't have a cuff, and so is a not dated cuff. What we know is that IZ that don't use a cuff has the lower leak around the mask compared to the other six laryngeal masks, and also compared to the triangular face mask, and also compared to the round face mask. This study is from, um, from uh, Sydney, from the Sydney group of neonatologists. But we have to take, uh, it is a mannequin study, and we have to take question to result also because the study were conducted in, uh, in a pediatric mannequin and no neonatal mannequin, it was a mannequin, so it completely different from newborns. Uh, why to use a not non-cuffed uh, uh, laryngeal mask? Because you are very fast, you don't need to be there in the, in the cuff and you can achieve uh, effective ventilation in a very short time. However, there are other interesting laryngeal mask model. For example, this is the Supreme LMA, size one, where you can have the gastric assets. And so you can use the, your cutter uh, that uh, go out from the tip and so it is go to the stomach and you are sure that uh, the position of the laryngeal mask is correct. This uh, kind of laryngeal mask is used mostly from anesthesiology during the uh, anesthesia. We don't know the size of the laryngeal mask. You know that the laryngeal mask is just size one now available in the market. There is only one size. This is a 700 that was treated by our pediatric resident. And you can see here that there was a damage that lack completely solved after one week, but there is an enlargement of the esophagus at uh, entry uh, at admission in the NICU. We don't really a lot of regarding the anatomy of the upper airway in the new world. So in this study, we try to collect anatomical measure of the upper airways in cases of fetus. And in addition, we assess the relationship between anatomical areas and the size one LMA. Here are some slides of, of our model we try to, to measure. And here you can see this is the tracker that was uh, lifted from the, this is the esophagus. And here you can see um, tip of the laryngeal, the cuff of the laryngeal mass as you have an enlargement of the esophagus. We collected some mold. And here you can see how the laryngeal mass can work in a cadaver. Here is the eye gel again. And uh, if you look here, we try to ventilate kindly. And uh, you can see here that you have a good expansion of the lung and you have enlargement or is a, is a position in the um, laryngeal inlet of the laryngeal mask. We collected 16 fetus and we um, try to prepare the measure. And now we are trying to um, to prepare the laryngeal mass dedicated to preterium. Uh, surely here you can see the relationship of the upper airways with the size one supreme LMA. And as you can see here, it is uh, clearly too much big. With, where the conclusion of this study? This study report for the first time the anatomical sizes of the upper airways, laryngeal and laryngeal areas in cadaveres or fetus. This data has information for the dining, a sweet table, and the safe supergotti airway device in preter infants. A available LMA using units weighing more than two kilograms are potentially dangerous in a smaller patient. I think it's smaller than one kg. Uh, I am going to my conclusion. Uh, the use of laryngeal mask, of course, includes uh, some gaps of knowledge that we um, summarize in our uh, in the European guidelines, the last fashion. We don't know how the laryngeal mask work in the setting of meconium steady and Despite our study conducted in uh, Mulago in Uganda, 60% of the of our enrolled patient of our thousand and two hundred patients had a meconium steady amniotic fluid. And so we can say that this study showed that the laryngeal could be effective also in this case. We don't know if the laryngeal mass is effective during chest compression. There is a very recent study published last month, uh, pediatric research, 
uh, by the group of Satyan that showed that they compare in, in the name, in, uh, in lamps, of, and so it's an animal study, they compare the effectiveness and the ventilation, the effectiveness of ventilation as uh, the, as the ROSC uh, due uh, um, to compression with, um, with the laryngeal mask and the tracheal tube. And they, the conclusion were that uh, in the animal study, I want to under, underline this, was that the laryngeal mass was effective as not the tracheal tube. We don't know if, if the laryngeal mass could be effective or useful in administration of emergency in the tracheal tube medication, such as adrenaline. We don't know really which is the best model that we can use. Is it better to use inflatable cuff or cuffless LMA? This is a question that remain, and uh, we don't know the site. Probably we don't know if we need, we know that uh, size one is uh, very good for patient, in my opinion, uh, higher than 1.5 kilograms. Less than 1.5 kilograms, we need uh, 0.5 or 0.75, uh, 75 uh, size. What to teach you use? Uh, I think that also in our um, courses, the laryngeal mask is, uh, is very well accepted. I saw that in every set, setting, in the low resource setting, middle resource setting, in high resource setting, always the participants were enthusiastic of the laryngeal mask because they cover a device that can save the patient without uh, the skill of intubation. But uh, the perception is that it is easy to teach, but uh, no really how to teach it. Message number three, conclusion. In clinical practice, the laryngeal mass is effective for PPV, also in an inexperienced caregiver. I show you the data from, uh, from Mulago Hospital. About 92-99% of lay preterminal neonates in PPV are effective and ventilated with LMA. There are several case reports that show that LMA was life-saving in neonates. We commit after our malformation, and so it is a good idea to have the laryngeal mask in our, in our emergency room. And the may may be used for station, but further study are in this moment needed. My last uh, sentence regarding the, the conclusion that also Kureshi reported in, uh, in its, uh, um, in its uh, review, um, Cochrane review. They conclude that, that it is important clinical community resort to the use of LMA more proactively to provide effective ventilation when newborn is not responding to bag and ventilation before attempting innovation or initiating chest compression. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Daniel. It was an amazing uh, uh, lecture. Uh, of something that we, I mean, we uh, don't know much about, to be frank. So uh, Thank you. now uh, I would request all the attendees to kindly write your questions in the Q and A box, not in the ch chat box. And in uh, uh, in another two minutes, we have a, a very interesting panel discussion coming up.
friends now we have a very interesting panel discussion coming up i have great pleasure in inviting two great neonatologists from india uh, we have surgeon vice admiral uh, dr sheela mathai she is incidentally the director general of armed forces medical service uh, as well but she is a core neonatologist also welcome ma'am we we also have dr c vino the consultant neonatologist from uh, mad uh, mad uh, southern india uh, who will be also moderating this session welcome dr vinod kindly unmute yourself and the floor is all yours kindly take over the session i would request everyone to kindly uh, write your questions in the q and a box not in the chat box so that the questions will be uh, visible for the moderators thank you thank you so much uh, dr manoj for this uh, absolute honor in uh, that i have been given to chair this absolutely outstanding session today congratulations um, dr uh, professor daniel your talk was uh, riveting i don't think anybody stopped listening for a minute and there were so many aspects which you clarified on this topic which really is uh, has the potential has not been tapped completely in neonatology there is no doubt about that and though many of us in the audience particularly those who have been practicing neonatology um, uh, exclusively have used the lma i myself have had experience when i was a professor of uh, pediatrics and neonatology at the armed forces medical college but there is so much more that we need to learn now we have a few questions many of them are re repetitive but before i uh, go on to the questions may i ask you one question uh, professor uh, kravi sanuto um you said that uh, you know you talked about the various types of lmas but you didn't really tell us whether or not the curved versus the straight lma is better now the classic lma is essentially a straight tube whereas some of the others are now curved so would you suggest that um, we use the curved more than the straight or is there no difference between the two i think you have to unmute yourself yeah first of all i would like to to say you that i have not conflict of interest with the with the producer of lme and so that is important for me i can just uh, um, tell my experience my uh, my experience was born with uh, with the cafe de lme the classic lme the beginning and um, i worked at a lot of i had a lot of uh, um, connection with the inventor with dr achi brain that is uh, you can image very very expert is uh, no every small details that can help you to understand how to use and so i learned a lot from uh, from him and from uh, Uh, anesthesiologist because uh, they use more frequently than me and so i went uh, the beginning in the so i think that uh, the gel just to we have to do the names the gel is a uh, is the uh, without a cuff and so is a is a gel that when uh, um, achieve the mucosa the mucosa it, it become uh, soft and so you do a, a an import seal that is the why is the called the called the igel uh, i think that is very useful for uh, you, for uh, new users because as i told you i show you in the in the video you just you have to introduce it and uh, there are some uh, also um, uh, information how to put it because you have to go against the palate and so on but uh, these are the day that i avoided to present here uh, when you have inflatable you have to put a dare and i saw in a, in my experience i saw the some uh, um, some young doctors or nurses, they don't know where to put the syringe and uh, and so for an expert like me for example i think that or, or like you <laughs> uh, I think that uh, the cuff is less invasive, probably, and so you can use it for no, I, this. For excuse me, uh, Doctor da Professor Daniel, I was asking about the shape, the curve. The ah, curve. the curve. Yeah. Yes, yes. The curve. Ah, the shift. Yeah. No, but the shift in general, the shift of angel mask are more or less the same, like a little bit uh, curved, like a, a part of one or two. Uh, 
uh, in my opinion, in the tracheal tube, I prefer the the curve, the curve. Sorry, I didn't uh, understand yes. your question well. And the other question that I just wanted to ask you before we go on to the questions in the Q&A box is that you said that you can give the surfactant through the LMA while the baby is still on the nasal CPAP. Am I right? Uh, have, that the baby is on the nasal CPAP and you can give the surfactant through the LMA. So um, now, am I giving, um, are we to understand that the LMA doesn't cause any obstruction to the CPAP? Because the nasal CPAP is going through the nasopharyngeal airway and the LMA is obstructing that part. So how does that uh, work out when you're giving the surfactant? Okay, thanks for this question. Yes, of course, when you put the laryngeal mask, you lost the advantage of the, of the CPAP. Yeah. But in that case, we put the laryngeal mask, the CPAP, the tube, we remove, the, we leave the, the nasa cannula, of course, in the baby. What we use a deviation for giving the CPAP through the laryngeal mask. Yes, it's, that's what I wanted to ask you, that you can give the CPAP temporarily through the laryngeal yeah. mask. Yes, we are giving the surfactant. Yeah, now, yeah. if you can do that, and if you, as you said, that the uh, leak is at 25 to 22 to 25 centimeters, why hasn't the LMA ever been used for CPAP? Uh, the CPAP was born for anesthesia, please remember. And so the patient has to be happy to have in place the mask. And uh, in this case, we have a, a more effective and more acceptable, uh, uh, less invasive um, modality to, yes. to administer up. There are some studies in adults during the weaning for intubation, they use the laryngeal mask, but the patient were sedated. It's not the case for the newborns. Yes. So we'll just go to the questions in the Q&A. Uh, there is one question from Dr. Paul. He says that, do you think that in the next, uh, NRP guidelines, the LMA will replace the face mask and other um, modes of giving positive pressure ventilation as the primary if, mode. If you the literate, we have a long discussion with the ECOR task force, and neonatal ECOR task force. If you look at the literature, yes, the laryngeal mask came first because it's more effective than face mask, for example, and is not uh, more invasive because no damage were demonstrated. But uh, uh, you know that the uh, guidelines are very conservative. <laughs> it's very difficult to change a, mm, a, 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 a stab established guideline. And so I don't know if they will, uh, I think that it can replace in case of face mask failure. Mm, that is important in my opinion because you can save uh, a part of intubation and uh, in non expert I think level one, level two hospital, in that case, the laryngeal mask could be very useful. But we have to need to increase our experience with the laryngeal mask before to, because neonatologists don't think laryngeal mask is available. It's not in the mind, in their mind. It does not exist. Uh, while in the anesthesiologist, they have anesthesiologist delivery room, he asks for the laryngeal mask. It's a completely different approach. You're so right. And uh, the, uh, there was a question from Dr. Levent who says that how long can we ventilate with an LMA? And uh, in relation to this, there was another question that could the inflated cuff cause necrosis after some time? Um, how long, uh, for example, the patient show you uh, was um, the laryngeal mass stay in, the, in, in place for five hours. And so for a long time, but the patient had told you has to be sedated. My opinion in the um, in, uh, in asphy the ideal use of the laryngeal mask is in uh, asphyxia with patient with mild to moderate asphyxia. And so patient that uh, I, I, my, my mind that we can use the laryngeal mask for a few minutes. Of course, in patient in complete depression, you can use also for hours. But uh, I think that uh, that is the right, the, ideal patient, for example, a patient who the mother receives uh, pioids before the delivery, you have the patient depressed and you have to ventilate, you fail. Or in, uh, in asphyxiated patient, we demonstrated that uh, 
um, the, enough, the study were conducted enough that they were severely asphyxiated. And so you cannot change the depth of the brain damage with the laryngeal mask, or but with any kind of uh, interface, because the damage is already down before birth. But the ventilation was really part of them effectively performing. Uh, the other question was, sorry, the time and the... And whether or not the cough can cause uh, necrosis. Necrosis. Compression. Compression. Ah, necrosis. Necrosis. Oh, yes. It depends. There are some studies that show that when, uh, in the older study, show when you use, uh, we use uh, the milliliter of air in the cough. Really, it should be better to use the pressure in the calf. In the other study, the Archie Brain, Dr. Brain, and others show that when you um, go up or, uh, in a pressure higher than 60 centimeter water, you can, for a long use during anesthesia, two, three hours, you can uh, provoke uh, necrosis. But otherwise, it's not a problem for short term uses. So in that way, the eye gel is better for newborns? Do you think the eye gel is better? I don't want to. Uh, I you think that I gel. Thermoelastic, the, uh, you know. For the beginner. Thermoplastic elastoma. Is that better rather than a cuff? For the beginner, I think that uh, uh, eye gel is easier to, to learn. And there is, the, I show you the, the mannequin study from Sydney. They show that. Uh, is impressive. The leak is only three percent, six percent compared to twenty-five percent of face mask, a thirty-five percent of the second better laryngeal mask. But I was a reviewer of this article. I was not convinced because I don't believe to, to the mannequin study, but in particular in a child mannequin and so no neonatal mannequin. So is a, there is not there are not that have compared the laryngeal mask, uh, the uh, eye gel with the classic, for example, in neonates. In, udo, in odors, there are many studies during anesthesia, and the uh, effectiveness more or less is similar. And so I don't think uh, there is a, a big uh, difference, apart from the learning. So before I hand over to Dr. Uh, Vinod, there's one question on whether, whether or not the LMA will compromise feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, I, I think that uh, I think that uh, the uh, you cannot uh, use the laryngeal mask for a long time, and so I think that with the okay. feeding is uh, is different. Is different. Yeah. So yes, so it does ask. not make sense to use the laryngeal mask during during long for mm -hmm. long time. Thank you so much, Professor. I'll ask Dr. Vinod to take some of the other questions. Yeah, thank you, Madam. Uh, before going to the questions, it was a crisp and clear, nice presentation, sir. Much informative, evidence-based as well. So we'll take a few questions now. Uh, two questions uh, which are similar. Someone wants to know about the size based on the weight of the baby. Uh, it is 880 grams. You mentioned in a talk that uh, 880 grams baby was used LMA. So, but uh, 1,500 was, uh, I mean, it was termed as a cutoff. So is it okay? To you to use for an 880 gram, and the same way, uh, someone one other person, Goshal, has asked about the size, selecting the size regarding LMA using LMA. Okay, thank you again for this uh, uh, question. LMA, uh, look at the um, uh, uh, what is it is written on the on the on the box of the LMA is approved for patient with uh, to a higher than two kilograms and higher or equal. 34 weeks. The same thing are, are written in the guidelines, American guidelines. In European guidelines, we included also 1.5 kilogram because we conducted a randomized control trial in Hanoi, in Vietnam, and we showed that uh, laryngeal mask, in that case, we use a supreme LMA in that study, was effective also in patients higher than 1.5 kilogram. For patients with a lower bit weight, I think it is a uh, it is. It can be used only from uh, um, doctor with experience because there are many small details that uh, is better not to to explain now. But uh, uh, okay. The second question, okay, is uh, is regarding uh, the size. We have just size one for LMA. There is just one company that say that they have zero point five. 
but you look at the shape uh, and the measure of the of the cuff is identical to one one point zero, and so is the really smaller than uh, than what. Uh, and uh, the size one is recommended for patients between two and five kilograms. Okay. We are trying to prepare, we are working on a smaller one size because uh, you know that uh, preterm newborns are the, the goal for us at this point. Now, good point also for uh, surfactant administration, uh, new laryngeal mass, but uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not time now to present it. <laughs> we hope to, to uh, next year, Dr. Manoy. <laughs> So definitely, you... definitely. <laughs> we'll call you again <laughs> get an update on your research thank you thank you yes, we are looking forward to okay, two questions regarding time. surfactant administration sir uh, can surfactant be administered directly without catheters one person has asked this question and one another thing is can the minimally invasive techniques be compared with the administration using LMA uh, there are no study compared LISA or MIST with uh, LMA, and so I don't know. Mm, of course, LISA is a MIST widely used, but uh, there are no study compared to, to, to this approach. And uh, uh, it can be administered directly in the, in the catheter, in the, in the main tube of the laryngeal mass, the surfactant, but I think that you need a catheter, the short catheter, with the tip in the middle or the end, not beyond the, beyond the tip, but because the most part, you know, the risk is that you lost a lot, you lose a lot of surfactant in that case. And so it's better to use, a, in my opinion, a, a, a short catheter. You don't need the, the Lisa catheter, you need a, a suction, a normal suction catheter, you know, you don't need to spend money for this and so. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, what will be the better practice in a primary healthcare system? In a primary healthcare setting, uh, using a CPAP or a LMA ventilation, which, which is going to be better in a primary healthcare setting? No, I think that uh, in a, uh, no, I think that in the primary healthcare setting, but also in high resource, in high uh, level care setting, I think that. Uh, um, CPAP has to be down with the um, interfaces that we have, we are already using. That means short nasal cannula, nasal 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 mask, and not with the laryngeal mask because again laryngeal mask has been used in patients who are sedated or are happy to receive it. And so don't use the laryngeal mask for long uh, for long period. Okay, fine. So, so one another question from Dr. Manjusha. Uh, if surfactant can be administered via LMA, then why not drugs like adrenaline during resuscitation? Can it be given effectively or reliably? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manjusha. Uh, good question. We, in recent uh, review article or review article from the group, we Mm, show it that adrenaline can be administered also through the endotracheal tube. Be before we say we don't know the efficacy, why, if you look at the literature, it was effective also by using endotracheal tube. There is just one study in a very small patient published letter published in, uh, I think, 20 years ago in uh, pediatrics, where they use it in the eight and eight. I, Eight, uh, 800 grams patient, uh, they administer surfactant, they administer adrenaline via laryngeal mask and it was effective. We use very small uh, uh, amount of fluid when we give um, adrenaline. And so I don't know how much adrenaline if you put in the main tube of the laryngeal mask can achieve uh, the, the lung and the, and the, and the absorb, uh, yes, absorption in the lung. And so it's been question. We don't know if this work could be reasonable. I told you that so far there is just one case report reported to my knowledge. Do you want to continue, madam? Hand over yes. to you, madam. Um, thank you. Um, um, Dr. Daniel, there is one more question as to whether when you put the catheter to give surfactant, 
can you localize the tip of the catheter by an echo or an ultrasound? This is by Dr. Moretti. So he's asking whether the tip can be localized by some ultrasound or echo or whatever. Uh, thank you, Corrado, for this question. Uh, no, uh, we don't. We 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 decide after the the our our uh, initial experience on the failure of the Rinzan uh, distal position, and we decide to leave uh, it in the main tube. It could be an idea, but uh, the problem is that the vocal cords are not happy to to be passed by by a blind catheter, and so you are in the in the blind situation. And in that case, you dangerous. And so, I I am very quiet to to give specific uh, specific. It will be a very good idea, but uh, uh, my yeah, all the all the approach also in adult uh, upper hour uh, management is uh, to do everything under under vision. I think that the future is under vision for every kind of sovragotti airway device. Blind intubation through the um, supragotti airway device at this point is not uh, recommended. Or is, uh... There's one more question um, I, wish I would like to ask you, Dr. Daniel, is that uh, what is the role of the LMA in transport of babies? Transport from one. Ah, the transport. This is another interesting question. We I had not time to show you some of our cases. Uh, who were one case from our group, and uh, who were stubated in the during the ambulance transfer? It was uh, we put uh, we introduced the laryngeal mask. We arrived in our NICU without any problem. There is another study from uh, uh, Australia where they have a. Uh, where they were transferring and, uh, and um, uh, septic babies who had uh, an important apnea during hel helicopter transfer, they put the laryngeal mask and the patient was effectively ventilated. I think that during the transport, in case of emergency, not as a first choice, I think that uh, uh, the laryngeal mask is a uh, is very useful tool instead of intubating during the transfer. And so, yeah. Yes, you, you, we, we have the, the laryngeal mask in our transport bag. And so very rarely we have used it, but uh, it could be, it could be uh, useful to have it there. And there's one more question that uh, one would like to ask you is that um, uh, it seems now, and we, I think we will all agree, all of us who have attended, and that's almost 150 people, that we all want to rush back and see how we can use this LMA more effectively. Now, the thing is that when we use it on the mannequins, because I've personally had experience, it's very easy to put. Many of these mannequins, you don't need to make any effort to put the LMA into the mannequin. And to my mind, I think it gives a false sense of security. You feel it's so easy. Uh, do you think that we should be, uh, uh, you know, teaching particularly our, um, you know, younger colleagues and uh, nurses, et cetera, on cadavers? I know it's not easy. But uh, do you think that is better, more effective to learn to, in, uh, uh, to insert the LMA on a cadaver vis-a-vis -a, -vis a mannequin? The mannequin somehow or the other give a very easy feel when you put the LMA. Uh, particularly some of the, just the heads, they are, they're, they're too simple. The LMA just goes so simply that you feel but, as a Yes, okay. I think that the learning curve has to be or uh, the training on the angel master, um, on, on a training on laryngeal mask, uh, my opinion uh, is uh, has to be organized uh, in a mannequin at the beginning, and you every every uh, participant to our courses and uh, also to your courses say, oh, but it, it is uh, so easy uh, in the in the in the new boss. and uh, really the answer is yes, it is easy in a mannequin. Probably is easier than in in sorry in the um, baby is easier than in the mannequin. However, my, my training course was based on the participation to two morning section in the operating room in our, in our gynecology uh, department. And I spent, uh, uh, I, I think I put uh, 10 laryngeal masks in the, in 
um, in the mothers, in the mothers, and I was very happy. And so I became, I, at the end of the day, I said, oh my God, it's easier also in the human. And so my suggestion is please spend one, two days in your operating room with your anesthesiologist and you, you become uh, uh, confident with the use of the laryngeal mask. But every time that I was in the living room, there was the opportunity to use the laryngeal mask, I asked it to the PDT resident that has the responsibility of our of every uh, procedure in our center, because we are a teaching center or, or a university hospital, or midwife. And when I asked, please use the laryngeal mask, they always effectively ventilated the baby. And uh, I faced the same uh, um, success in the ends of life in Africa. When we there, we went there, also in, uh, in, um, in Vietnam, I know, you went, I went there, we uh, organized a, afternoon training, uh, training during a, an afternoon, and so with the mannequin, blah, 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 blah. And after they went in the delivery room, and it is impressive, but the, the chest of the, uh, the, tor the, the movements, uh, the chest of, we saw the movement of the chest in no, most part of the patient. I, I want to say more than 1995, and so more effective with the face mask, and so, Mm, yes, in my opinion, the learning curve is really very short, also in the humans. And so, but you need to do the step. You need to do the step. The anesthesiology at the beginning had the same problem when Jamas was uh, present in the market uh, 30 years ago. They saw, well, we have the face mask, we have the endotracheal tube. Why we have need to use another device? But now in uh, UK, 80% of uh, uh, surgical intervention or anesthesiology intervention made by laryngeal mask because it's less invasive. The day after they have not a problem to the um, trachea and so on. So there are important in, uh, uh, in, uh, in adults in anesthesiology medicine. And so I think that uh, just to have uh, to take confidence, of course, you need uh, someone that master you to, to do the step and uh, I think we finished all, all the questions in the Q&A and um, I think uh, thank you so much um, uh, Professor Daniel that was such an illuminating talk and I think you really fired our enthusiasm <laughs> learn more about the LMA and to use it more in our various settings I'm sure all of us will uh, try at least to the best of our ability to uh, increase the use of this wonderful device Thank you so much for the uh, Thank you. information and sharing of knowledge. Thank you, Professor Daniel. Really, it was a nice talk, much informative. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vino. Thank you. So well, uh, uh, well said, uh, 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 Dr. Sheila Mathai, Madam. Uh, it is actually you know one of those uh, talks that has actually stimulated us to. Uh, do more on this topic. This is an area where there is a lot of, uh, I mean, like, uh, more research needed. And then you are, I mean, like, you have been the leading light in this regard. So, um, I would like, to, uh, anyway, we need to, uh, even though it was a very nice session, we need to end it at some point. So, let us, uh, I mean, like, uh, I have the pleasure of uh, and the honor to thank all three of you. Um, Surgeon Vice Admiral Dr. Sheila Matai and Dr. Vinod uh, for uh